Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be talking about what I mentioned in yesterday's video. This is our first official look at the new season. We're going to be going over another audition tape that was released online about a month ago or so, but we only found it just a few days ago. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so yeah, there were three audition tapes released online, one that was just privated recently, and maybe we'll go over that sometime in the near future. However, today we're going to be talking about the second person, and so again, in respect to the actor and, you know, the people recording it, I'm not going to upload it in this video, the link will be in the description below to the Vimeo link, you guys can watch the whole audition, you can do it right now, or you can do it after the video. It's up to you, but make sure you stick around for the whole video as we break this whole thing down because it's very interesting and I think this may include one of our main characters. Okay, so the guy is Martin Wilson. He's an actor who lives in Vancouver and so he's auditioning for the role of Silas. That is the character's name that we are going to be talking about in this video. So if you look up online and try and find anyone called Silas, there are a few characters in DC Comics that are called Silas, obviously most notably Silas Stone, the father of Vic Stone, aka Cyborg in the comics, but that is not him because this is different. This guy is talking about his husband being stuck at Striker's prison, which we have seen on Supergirl. Lena's been in there many times, and it's a recurring location that the show talks about and sometimes we visit it, as that is the prison where Lex was incarcerated and he escaped and then Last year, I think, Lena went back there a couple of times to visit it and visit that one inmate because she was doing some tests at Strikers Island. So this Silas guy, who is he? I mean, he's a bit of a mystery right now because if you do do research, like I said, Silas Stone is not that character that we are seeing this guy audition for. There is Silas Spencer, who is probably my best guess, but he hasn't been around since the 40s and he was erased in Crisis. But he's a villain. I guess this guy kind of seems like a villain, but he's also a bit sympathetic. But he is working with some sort of villainous intent because he did break into the prison to get his husband out. Obviously, you can, you know, feel for him and everything, but he kind of sounds a little bit like a villain. So maybe he is auditioning for a villain, but he seems more like a nice guy with some troubled past, basically. And so I don't think he's anyone specifically from the comics, but you guys can do your own research and you can look into it. But as far as I know, he's not from the comics. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down this dialogue. I want to go over all of the important stuff, so please be sure to stick around for the whole video. So this is the first line he says, My husband was falsely accused of theft and sentenced to six months in the Strikers. And so in the Strikers, he means Strikers Island, which we've seen before. And so he says, They took Owen away from me. It was so unfair. I had to get him back. And in reply to Silas, a lady answers back. And we'll go over who potentially the lady is in a minute. And she says, You're the only person who has broken into Strikers. And he replies, You must understand, I failed and you will fail too. And... Right, let's go back and talk about what he said. So, his husband was falsely accused of theft and sentenced to six months at Strikers, so his husband was incarcerated there, and he was there for a short amount of time. He felt bad for that, he really thought that was very unfair, and he had to get him back, so he created some sort of technology. As in the next bit, the lady says, Please, I'm certain I can replicate your technology. And so that obviously rings off bells, who can create technology, we'll go over that in a second. And then he says, oh, the tech is the easy part. So basically the way he broke into Strikers was by inventing some sort of technology that was able to make him get in. So is he able to like walk through walls, is he able to transport to a place, or did he literally break in, like break down a wall or something. But it's all something to do with his technology that he's created. And obviously he's got a reason to break in, he's not just a prison trying to do a prison break, he's just trying to get out his husband who was falsely accused. And so, yeah, that's all interested and he is the only person who has ever broken into Strikers. Well, 
that's to be debated because Lex broke out. I guess Lex didn't break in because he has no reason to go back in, but he did break out. However, let's continue. So after saying please, I'm certain I can replicate your technology. He says, oh, the tech part is easy. And then he talks about the guards. They feed on your fear by making you live it. They're like shadow spores. They creep inside of you, infect everything good and right, and turn it against their hosts. Eventually, you forget that they're doing it to you at all. So from this, we can infer that he was probably locked up there after he broke in because he knows about how the guards infect them. They, you know, turn everything that was right into bad and turn everything that's good against the host. And so the reference of Shadow Spores, I recognize the name. I know it's something about infection because that's what they're talking about. I recognize the word, but I couldn't find out anything to do with Shadow Spores. Maybe you guys know more. Maybe they referenced it in the past, like yesterday in the video we mentioned Zook, who was mentioned in the other audition tape, and it turns out, and I forgot, that he was actually referenced by Jon Jones in Season 3 many times in Season 5 as well, so, you know, maybe I've missed out on Shadow Spores, but it sounds familiar to me. And so let's just quickly go back to the part about the lady and her being able to replicate technology. She's obviously very good at technology, so is she someone who is new and is very good at tech? Or is it someone that we know? Is this, in fact, Lena? So that is the first name that popped to my mind when I heard this line, because, you know, Lena's very good at technology and she can basically replicate anything, I'm pretty sure, because she is that smart when it comes to technology. And so, what happens if it is Lena who has to go in? However, we'll have to wait and see because it's about someone that this person loves. And I don't know if Lena is going to find a love interest at the start of the season. Maybe by the end of the season, Lena will find a love interest again. So that's the one red flag where it's like, oh, maybe this isn't Lena. But it sounds like Lena because... She is always a tiny bit shady, but then again, she has basically joined back with Team Supergirl. All is forgiven and forgotten about what she's done, especially last season. And, you know, the kind of back and forth between Supergirl and her. So let me know your theories in the comments down below. Do you think this is Lena or not? Do you think it's anyone else? At first, I was like, maybe this is Alex, like, doing some sort of interrogation. But then when you listen to the whole thing, it turns out, like, no, that's not Alex. But anyway, so let's continue on from this. Your nightmare becomes your reality, and that's when you go insane, just like my husband did. So that's what he says, and in reply to that, the lady says, I'm sorry that happened to you, but now you have a chance to save someone I love, and in reply to that, he says, it's a pointless exercise. And she continues saying, you're the only one that can help, because I believe you're the kind of guy who would. Prove me right help me and then he says okay get me a pen so i'm guessing he writes down you know how he broke into strikers and you know obviously she knows how to replicate the technology but he probably gives her the blueprints or something like that and from the way that she's talking she doesn't actually necessarily sound like a villain it sounds like someone who has been wronged rather than someone who wants to break in and you know let all the criminals loose or something like that so I'm a bit confused as to if this is going to be a villain or not. It could be because sometimes you get villains of the week that are, you know, kind of skew with in their motivations and they don't necessarily turn out all bad. So yeah, I think the only questionable thing about it potentially not being Lena is because this person is trying to break in two strikers to save someone that she loves and that is why she has gone to this Silas character in order to get his kind of wisdom and basically his help to try and break into Strikers once again. So yeah, from all of this, it seems like Silas was actually sentenced there and he was inside there because he knows about all of that, unless when he broke in and he actually got out, but he didn't actually get his husband out, but he kind of got told what happened in there and like what the guards did to him and everything like that. So, yeah, I'm not sure if they're strictly villains, they both have two sides to them, I think, and so it seems like, you know, this point in episode 1, episode 2, episode 3, I don't know when it is, it seems like we're gonna see an episode where we have a Strikers Heavy episode, where we have some sort of prison break, and that is what's gonna be happening with these two characters. If you have any other theories in regards to the lady and who you think she is, do you think it's one of our regular characters 
or do you think it's a villain of the week, someone that we haven't seen as of right now and we're going to see for the first time in season 6? Please let me know in the comments down below. And although Supergirl and the CW shows do regularly cast, you know, recurring members or guest stars who are locals to Vancouver, Right now, more than ever, I think we're going to see more locals than ever. You're not going to see that many Americans flying over from America to Canada, as they would have to quarantine there and back, and unless they're doing such a big role that it would be worth it for them in terms of pay, and in terms of how many days they're going to shoot, will it be worth it to bring in tons of Americans? I don't think so right now due to the restrictions, and I think there is some more restrictions in Vancouver at the moment, so... I think it's, you know, a little bit risky and a lot of these characters are going to be cast by locals. The audition tapes you've seen are all from Vancouver locals, so it seems to be something along those lines. So, anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Please stick around by clicking the subscribe button and turning on notifications to not miss any videos. I may talk about the third audition that we don't actually have a video for anymore due to it being privated sometime very soon. Also, we have a lot of other stuff to talk about in the next few days, so be on the lookout. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.